the Expert Webcast. I'm your host, Leah Rosen, the Online Editor for Bioprocess International. Before we get started, just a couple of notes. This webcast is being recorded and will be made available for replay in the multimedia section of our website. We've muted the audio lines, but we welcome you to type in your questions for our speaker in the chat window on your screen. After the presentation, we will begin the question and answer portion because this is, after all, Ask the Expert, and I will ask our speaker your questions from the chat window. Your questions in the chat window will only be visible to myself and our speaker. Again, thank you for joining us today. It is now my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Millie Eula from Repligen. Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, depending on where you are. I'm very happy to be here today. So I'm going to speak for the next 15 minutes or so on the solutions for process intensification. And this is using a high performance cell retention device um, for cell culture process intensification and also continuous process that many of you uh, may be familiar with. So to begin with, I'd just like to re review um, how the market is growing in terms of MAP-based biologics. Um, there are more and more uh, drugs entering the market and eight in FDA approvals currently. What we see with these new drugs coming onto the market are emerging trends and new challenges. And so these are related to several aspects, including um, the use of integrated continuous processing, shift to disposables, uh, regionalization, and focus on process economics. And all of these things are really changing the way that we manufacture drugs uh, now and looking forward into the future. If you look at historical pro products that were manufactured uh, by continuous processes and by perfusion, you can see that it's really not a new technology. Um, the, first, the first approved um, drug to be um, launched using a perfusion device was a spin filter, and it's Reopro in 1994. And more recently, what I'm really going to focus on today is the ATF system. You can see we're also in approved manufacturing processes since 2000. So not only is the ATF used for continuous processing, but you can also use it to improve process efficiency in very traditional and classic fed batch. And there are a number of ways that that can be accomplished. So this can be through high density seed transfers, um, or through cell banking, or through N minus one perfusion. So you can see up here that we have a high density cell banking application. And this is the creation of a larger volume frozen cell bank. But then the implementation of that cell bank into a process really allows you to skip a number of steps. And down here, you can see N minus 1 perfusion. So this is really eliminating either N minus 1, which is one step before your manufacturing reactor, or two steps. Uh, before your manufacturing process would be N minus two, and that would be um, increasing efficiency and reducing time for processing in the N minus one process. And both of these applications can be applied to very classical fed batch applications. So cell retention devices are not only used for continuous, they can be used in very traditional processes. So if you're not familiar with um, the ATF, it stands for Alternating Tangential Flow Filtration. It's essentially a perfusion device, and it is used in GMP uh, manufacturing, stainless steel housing with a hollow fiber filter cartridge inside. It's attached to the bioreactor via a single connection. And the real um, benefit of this design is that you have a constant flow up through your single connection into the bioreactor and back down again which with each short cycle, you have a small backflush, which really helps to uh, prevent the filter clogging and can accomplish cell concentrations of over 100 million cells per mil or even higher. So I'm going to review a case study now. Um, this is using a perfusion for applied to N minus one seed ex expansion. And this would be something you could apply to a fed batch uh, process. And ultimately, what we'll show is that you can reduce the time to manufacturing because the current status quo of a fed batch could be a process from vial to the manufacturing reactor and to harvest of 30 days or longer. The ATF uh, retention system can intensify that process in 
first of all, apply high-density cryo-seed intermediates, um, and this is where cell banking comes in, or you could incorporate a pilot-scale ATF uh, perfusion bioreactor in an N-1 C-step, or you could actually apply both. So in this example, we're going to review both. This, um, this slide here reviews the production of the um, cryoses, the cell banking. So the first graph that you see here is um, showing the actual um, perfusion process that was used to create the cryo seed. Um, this graph here then shows the thawing of 100 mil seed um, in a perfusion process, and this one here compares a one liter cryo bag with a 100 mil cryo bag. And what you're seeing here is that ultimately the viable cell densities and the viabilities of the cell line from when it was initially manufactured compared to when it was thawed um, in, in both volumes is very reproducible and um, very um, in maintains viability of the cell line. In this um, slide here, what we're reviewing here is the use of that cryo seed um, and the implementation of that. And finally, when you put that into the production fed batch, how does that affect the process? So you can inoculate at two different cell densities. And this um, graph here shows three colors. So the green color is inoculating the manufacturing reactor at um, 10 million cells. And the blue and the red line here is inoculating the final production reactor at 0.5 million cells. So you can see that by increasing the cell density of your uh, manufacturing reactor, it saves you time. So it's reduced from 14 days to 9 days. And it also increases the cell densities as well, so of the entire batch. So what you're seeing here is the actual production of protein from that um, same reactor, and you can see very comparable protein production here when inoculated at 0.5 million cells. And when you inoculate at 10 million cells, again, you're really getting a much higher protein production in a shorter amount of time. And ultimately, when you compare the specific productivity of those two processes, you can see that the specific activity of both um, seeding densities is again the same. So you haven't affected either one, but actually you've achieved the same cell densities and the same product concentrations. This is applied to a very traditional fed batch. So what we've demonstrated in this uh, case study is that the ATF offers significant gain and production duration. You can do that in a couple of ways, in um, producing high-density de high cryo-seed intermediates, N-1 uh, seed expansion, and you can reduce your processing time anywhere from over 30 days, which is very traditional, to less than 14 days. Very comparable cell densities and proteins. So if you think about fed batch in relation to perfusion culture or in relation to what what we think of as continuous processing. Fed batch processes typically have much larger production uh, reactors. In this example, we're showing 5,000 liters here in this picture, but in fact, a fed batch process can have reactors up to 10,000 liters. Um, and this obviously requires more time to set up a new facility, additional steps. Um, there could be additional process risk just because of that much larger volume and, of course, additional uh, capital risks as well. The reason why more and more people are looking at continuous processing and perfusions, particularly in early clinical phases, is you have a much better utilization of reactor time. You produce the same amount of product typically in a short time, and the product produced tends to have a more consistent quality through a steady state operation. I'm going to talk more about that. Um, Perfusion in later clinical phases and in scale-up uh, is also lower risk because the development scale tends to be commercial scale. And that's where it really lends it, uh, itself to single use. So uh, one of the reasons why people hesitate to change the 
this process is, is the understanding of how um, the FDA defines a batch. And there seems to be um, a lot of history around this idea where one bioreactor volume is thought to be the definition of a batch, and this lends itself to what we've typically been doing historically in fed batch operations. Actually, the FDA uh, presented this information uh, just a couple of years ago where um, they stated that a batch is a specific quantity of a drug or other material that's intended to have uniform character and quality. So it's not just one bioreactor volume. It can be applied to the quantity of material and not necessarily the specify the mode of manufacture of. So perfusion actually enables more consistent product quality. So here you see a graph with um, a typical fed batch growth profile, and there are two runs shown here. And then you have um, actual data showing a perfusion and steady state. So what we're showing here is really um, in a fed batch process, you have continuous growth, log logarithmic growth, and then um, you reach a peak, and then this so there's only really two points during this process where you have very similar um, bioreactor characteristics and cell concentration characteristics compared to the perfusion system here where you have steady state. And the idea here is that during this steady state, your um, metabolism of the cells is very consistent, so your production of your protein is also very consistent and that allows you to have many benefits in terms of um, consistency. Here we're looking at how we could potentially define a batch. So typically, um, we've historically defined a batch by the bioreactor volume following the normal um, life cycle of the cells. In a continuous process, you can apply a batch in a number of different ways. So here you can see Potential to pool during steady state, and this would require um, every three days pooling of the harvest, and then that would have several benefits because it could be used to help to manage downstream operations, or it could be um, 1,000 liters of perfused harvest pooled volume, or it could be um, the actual protein concentration volume. So there are several ways that a, a process could be defined in a continuous. Very much depends on the process, how that could be defined, but it's pretty flexible to be able to find a batch that Automation, um, just like any type of um, system, also helps to enable more consistent product and cell concentration. So in a continuous operation, you typically have cell bleeding in order to maintain a certain uh, cell concentration in achieve steady state. So initially, this could be done in a very manual way, where you have um, manual control, take offline samples, and then do um, a batch removal of the cell bleed to, to accomplish that, that uh, steady cell concentration. But really, by automating that and using a closed loop uh, probe, you can really smooth out that steady state and get a steady state operation. And again, much better um, cell concentration and more consistent. Cost of media um, can be something to consider in the cost of goods analysis for perfusion and continuous. This is just an example of a um, well defined medium which contains long R3. Long R3 is a cell culture growth factor supplement that's 200 times more potent than uh, insulin. So what this graph is essentially showing is that the cost of long R3 addition is 9% more. But in fact, with um, adapted cells, you can accomplish um, almost 100% increase in um, production per liter. So the economic benefits can be vastly improved. Right perfusion media, although your volumes increases, and uh, typically of the media could be leaner, and then with the right ingredients. So to finalize, manufacturing drivers for change. So continuous processing reduces manufacturing risk in a number of ways, the capital investment and technology transfer through reduced COGS, 
lends itself to single-use facilities and, of course, can be applied to uh, Fed batch facilities as well um, through cell banking in minus one. But what we see is a move towards continuous processing is a paradigm shift. And with these new technologies and the changing net regulations, that transition much easier, we see more approved processing in the standard, not only for continuous processing, but also for bed, bed batch processing. That would be my final slide. Open up for any questions.